Welcome to the first lecture in the Ancient Civilizations series of lectures. This first lecture is dedicated to studying the rise of human civilizations and looking specifically at how we got from here to there. And by here to there, what I mean is how did we go from being uh, the ancient human ancestors that we know and that anthropologists and archaeologists have studied to these very complex modern civilized creatures. So as we go through this series, hopefully I will be shedding some light on that and providing you with some information that will help you understand this historical process. So the first thing I want to talk about is, um, you know, really what are human origins? In your science classes, you've studied evolution. You have talked about the processes of evolution and to a certain extent even talked about human evolution. So we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about that. But what I will tell you in order to give you some scope is that the archaeological evidence actually provides us with specific fossilized remains of humans dating back as far as six million years. So we do have evidence dating back about six million years. The best preserved human remains that have offered over the last 35, 40 years some of the greatest insights into ancient humans is a fossil that was about four and a half million years old. She was discovered in uh, the 1970s by um, an archaeologist named Don Johnson. And her name was Lucy. And they called her Lucy because when they found her, uh, and when I'm when I say her, what I'm really talking about is the, her bones, her uh, fossilized remains. When they found um, the remains of this small female human or hominid two-legged creature, um, when they brought her back to camp, the song "Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds" by the Beatles was playing. So they named the fossil Lucy. So she's become very well known as Lucy. Lucy was a baseline. She provided a ton of information for researchers, and like I said, for over 35 years, she has been one of the most important fossils. And the thing about Lucy that made her so important was that she was the first fossilized remains that showed conclusively that humans walked upright as early as four and a half million years ago. And the reason that they knew it was because of her hip structure and uh, because of some of the other ways that her skeleton was put together. Now, this is all really important. You know, understanding what happened before us helps us really understand ourselves today. And understanding that upright walking developed four and a half million years ago gives us clues about how upright walking affected human development. And it affected it enormously. I want you to think for a second, why, from an evolutionary perspective, upright walking developed? The woman pictured in the photograph on your screen is a woman named Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall has spent her entire career studying not humans, but their chimpanzee cousins. And we know a lot about chimpanzees. We know a lot, especially from what Jane Goodall has taught us. We know that... Um, Chimpanzees use tools, which is something that used to simply be associated with humans. We know that chimpanzees wage war. We know that chimpanzees uh, do all kinds of things that used to be considered really just um, the ground of, of humans. But we know now, of course, because of her work, that they do these things. But the thing that chimpanzees, or among the things that chimpanzees don't do, is they don't walk upright. They still use their front uh, hands for a lot of their forward motion, which humans or hominids don't do. So what is the benefit of this? Why would these ancient ancestors of ours have developed this ability to walk upright? One of the primary benefits of walking upright was the fact that humans and all creatures, frankly, our main goal is to ensure that our offspring survive. And if you're living in the circumstances that ancient human ancestors were living in, and you have lots of predators. Um, we were not the predators at that time. We weren't the hunters. Four and a half million years ago, our ancestors were the hunted. And so in order to ensure that your, your um, offspring survive, you need to have certain tools. Now, there are um, fangs on animals like the lion, right, and claws. Um, 
Antelopes can run extremely fast. As a matter of fact, think about a horse. Within really the first few hours, within the first hour of being born, horses can get up and, if necessary, they can run. Human babies develop extremely slowly compared to that. Compared to other animals, humans are actually among the last mammals to be able to walk. Most babies, think about when you started walking. You were probably over a year old. Some babies don't start walking till they're two years old. The reason that this is important, upright walking freed human hands to gather their babies so that they could run. And this is really critical to our survival. And we're going to talk in this lecture series about a lot of events that were really critical to human survival and that allowed us to um, not only survive, but ultimately to build these massive civilizations and to become truly the dominant species on the planet. So we have this four and a half million year mark that we note because of, uh, of Lucy, but Archaeologists who are um, among the, the scientists who study the remains of the past, who actually do archaeological work where they dig up the remains um, of, of civilizations and creatures that have lived in the past. Archaeological evidence actually only dates as far back as 10,000 years for the existence of human settlements. So that's kind of where we're going to start. We're going to start talking about 10,000 years ago when humans actually went from living on these sort of open plains, these savannas, where they were gathering their babies and running from, um, you know, their predators to actually living in settled communities. So, um, so that's one of the, one of the next steps for us. But before we can get there, I want to talk about some of the milestones that we made between this upright walking period and this civilization. So big moments in human evolution. I've already talked about this four and a half million years, but recent evidence actually demonstrates that there may be, it's somewhat controversial still because there are a lot of scientists that are studying it, but National Geographic recently published um, a series of articles about researchers who have found six million year old fossils that they believe demonstrate that humans were actually walking upright as long ago as six million years, which is not a small difference. That's a huge difference. So like I said, the science is still somewhat controversial, but most agree that these fossils are likely to confirm that we were walking up to six million years ago. It takes us another four million years to develop stone tools. The first tools that were de developed by humans were actually two stones cracked together and the debris that was left over were oftentimes um, made into uh, axe points, rocks that had sort of a, a, a blunt um, kind of uh, point on the end but also the shavings that flew off of those ax points uh, were extremely sharp, especially when you're talking about um, certain kinds of rocks. If you go outside right now, if you pause this recording and you walk outside and you find two large rocks and you spend some time smacking those rocks together, what you're going to find is that eventually a break will occur. One of the rocks will break. And when that rock breaks open, it's going to leave a sharp edge on one of the rocks. These, these rocks, these stone tools became enormously useful to early humans in doing things like um, cutting up plants. We're not talking about rocks initially two million years ago that are going to, you know, be used to um, spear an animal. That's going to take another million years for that kind of technology to develop. But ultimately, that's where we get to. That's how we get to um, this place where we're actually able to um, see spears and arrows and these kinds of things. But it really just starts with two rocks, these stone tools. Um, then 750,000 years ago, an enormous event occurs in which humans, it is the evolutionary record shows that humans are first able to truly capture fire. The first fire was very likely captured from a natural source, such as lightning. But of course, lightning doesn't strike very often, and even if it does, it doesn't always start a fire. So it's a, it was a very unreliable source. So humans had to actually figure out how to do it. Um, in uh, some modern societies, such as the Maasai in Central Africa, you can still see how ancient fire starting techniques are used by some civilizations today. And those are typically friction-based 
fire starting methods where two pieces of wood are rubbed together extremely quickly. The friction from the wood uh, leads to an ember developing. That ember then is used to start a fire. So these kinds of techniques um, were used even uh, to 750,000 years ago. But the thing that fire does, well, it does a lot of things. First of all, fire provides heat. And heat means that humans can move into other environments. So humans can move then out of Africa, which is where we started our evolution, and move into cooler climates. And as the climate changed on the planet and the ice ages changed, um, which occurred um, over a series of years, but the, the most recent ice ages ended about 15,000 years ago, um, as those ice ages change the temperature of the planet, they cool the planet, um, creatures like humans needed fire to stay warm, to be able to sustain themselves, and ultimately to move out into other parts and to follow, frankly, to follow the animals who had become one of their primary food sources. So fire is huge for heat. It also is important for communication. Uh, humans are able to sit around the fire. They're able to spend time in groups now, um, uh, actually communicating and, and put in sort of a situation where there are more opportunities for um, bonding and communication. One of the little known uses for fire, of course, is for um, hygiene. Humans were uh, used fire to burn the grasses and mats and things like that that they used to sleep on um, that would over time become covered in lice and, and other kinds of insects. And it raises um, life expectancy because people aren't dying from diseases that are born through, through insects quite as, as frequently. And then finally, another use for fire was protection. So humans being able to use fire to set up perimeters and to scare off uh, predators. So fire is extremely useful. And again, it raises humans' life expectancy. The next enormously important event in human evolution is hunting. About 200,000 years ago, humans start hunting. And along with hunting comes language. Hunting is really difficult. For those of you who have ever gone hunting, you, sh I hope, are humble enough to admit that hunting is not easy. And it's not easy even when you have a modern rifle. But imagine hunting with nothing but sticks, a few rocks, your bare hands. One of the techniques that was likely used by ancient people was actually a group hunting technique in which the animal is actually surrounded and driven off a cliff. But in order to get a group of people to coordinate and outwit a deer, you need some way to communicate. And most um, anthropologists and uh, so, so, socio-anthropologists, anthropologists that study societies and the development of human society, believe that um, this is probably one of the ways that language first developed was through hunting and developing really first through sign language. So sign language is an even more ancient form of language than verbal language. Um, then moving on to a series of grunts, probably accompanied by sign language, um, and then ultimately a f those kinds of vocalizations passed down through generations emerge into language. This very complex language that I'm using right now to deliver this information really started as a series of hand gestures and grunts. So it's, it's pretty humbling to think about that. It wasn't until about 30,000 years ago that humans developed what we consider we call fine tools. And by fine tools, I mean things like the fish hook. Consider the humble fish hook. And what an incredible and important tool. Um, it was first, they would have first been made out of um, fish bones um, or other animal bones, but um, also the, the needle, the sewing needle. Again, the sewing needle capable of helping humans to modify hides, to keep themselves warm, and also to build even warmer shelters. Really critical. These kinds of really humble tools, um, we owe a great debt to them. The wheel is also going to come into play um, between 30 and 20,000 years ago. So again, these extremely humble tools, but of course you can see the implications that they would have on the development of the human race. And finally, it wasn't until about 10,000 years ago that humans began living in what we consider today 
um, complex civilizations. And by complex civilization, what I mean is humans began living in family groups. They began living in communities where they were sustaining one another and staying stationary to a large degree. Um, and in in that way then developing agricultural processes and that's what we're going to talk about later is the development of agriculture in the next lecture I'm going to talk to you about humans movement around the planet and how that movement around the planet um, affected uh, the the way that we live today so okay thanks